sweet. That'll work. Welcome to John's Workshop of Mystery. Ha! Ah, I have to admit, my normal viewers, I'm actually putting this <coughs> Flat Earth video on my regular channel um, just to show you what I'm up to. But first, because you are primitive bow aficionados and crossbow aficionados, two updates before I get into the science of the spherical Earth is um, on crossbows. The first one is an update on beast bow. I don't have a name for it really. But the last we spoke, I mentioned that I had uh, heat treated the belly, sinew backed uh, the back of the bow, sinew back. Which part did I sinew in? The back. And so I'm, I'm estimating that I should be with the reflex that I've gained, almost recurve, and the sinew backing, probably about 15 to 20 pounds of draw weight. This thing is going to be impressive, I do believe, because I'm going to work on the, the bolts. I'm serious, fans of crossbows, crossbow action. I bet you I can do 300 yards with this thing. This is amazing. This is amazing. Okay, update on this. I still have to wait for the sinew to cure. I'm not going to jump the gun, so to speak, jump the crossbow. Um, because I want that layer to be cured enough before I hit it and get it and go for 300 yards. The second one is I'm working in here, discussing with you fine things such as both, looking over there the other day, and it's like, wow, I have a steel pratted crossbow that I bought on eBay a long time ago. So, of course, I had to refinish it. And I'm asking you for help to identify the manufacturer of this. Right off the bat, you're probably saying it's a whammo, um Power Master, but I'm pretty sure that Whammo Power Masters had red oak stocks. This is cherry. The trigger mechanism is also slightly different, although they did change them um, year to year. And unlike the stock ones, they Whammo might have had steel prods. They usually had aluminum, although you could buy aftermarket ones. This is a steel prod. So this is a nice little crossbow, cherry stock. Steel prod, I'm going to show you the close-up of that trigger mechanism. So if any of you out there are familiar with vintage crossbows, please tell me who made this thing. The one odd thing is that I have this the, the prod jammed in there, wrapped with electrical tape and stuck in there because there's no mechanism to hold it in. There's this mystery hole on the bottom of the, the tiller, stock for you gun people, the tiller, that there must have been some kind of a thing holding it. Now what I'm going to do, excuse me, I do believe that I'm going to take um, that round rasp, 3 eighths I think it is, don't quote me on that, and I'm going to make a round in the bottom of the stock. Then something as simple as just mild steel um, coat hanger wires, coat hanger wire, cut it and make like a yoke for that, and then it's going to come up here. Yeah, you can't see that. Come up here a piece, and I'm just going to bend it over. So it's going to be a very simple way of securing that prod. Although, you know, if you jimmy it in there with electrical tape, it's not bad. On to the next subject. Hopefully you got the details. So you can, you can research it and tell me, you know, who made that. So you notice... I have a glow right over there. I've got a telescope on an equatorial mount. And the, the thrust of my videos that I put on my other channel was how can an, equator, an equatorial mount track all the celestial objects, including our sun, on only one axis on a flat Earth? It works on a spherical Earth, because this is exactly what's happening. Um, I had to have access for it to mount my little model here, so I apologize to um, Australia, because I just clipped off one of your towns, but I had to be able to reach in there. Okay, so there's a thing, the North Pole, South Pole, nothing new. But we also have the North Celestial Pole. Let's say that Polaris is that light right up there. And then there is, I don't believe there's one in the Southern Hemisphere. I haven't done a lot of stargazing in Australia. All my stargazing, 45 degrees north latitude, Michigan. 
northern hemisphere. So why we can trap stuff with an equatorial mount with just one axis, I'm not moving it up and down, it's just like this, is take our north and south pole, you know, basically there's geographic and magnetic, and but we're just going to lump them into one, and we're going to orient it with Polaris. Polaris, the North Star. And that's why it doesn't seem to, to move, although it has over the past thousand years, because of precession, um, it is making a circular path, and that's been measured, documented. It's spinning from west to east, which makes things appear that they're coming east to west. Everything in the sky. Everything in the sky. Just like that. And so what I do is, I'm at 45 degrees north latitude. I have this little doohickey down here. don't want to burden you with scientific stuff. But this adjusts your equatorial mount, provided that it's level. Um, so it'll track stuff. 45 degrees latitude, that's mine. If you were on the equator, you'd have to bring this down. If you were on the North Pole, you'd have to put that up to 90 and everything is just spinning around you. But we're at 45. You have to have this axis. Who else has a tennis ball with a stick through it? You have to have this axis so it's pointing at the celestial pole. And so, in effect, this is set up, this axis, right through the poles, pointing at Polaris, and that means that when this is spinning west to east, and it appears that things are going from east to west, it tracks them. It works with everything. If I go like this, not parallel with the equator, but it still tracks stuff. Concentric circles. These are concentric circle star trails. And on my other video, on my other channel, I had people, I asked questions. You know, how do you get an equatorial amount to track stuff in just one axis on a flat earth? And of course, I'm not getting any answers. I'm getting other things. One fellow saw this sitting over here and asked me, why is your globe perfectly round um, when it should have like a bigger diameter at the equator than if you did polar? It's like... Really now, you, you're going to change the subject, and then you're going to attempt to say with your eyes on the video that there is no difference between the, the polar diameter and the equatorial diameter, when in fact the reality is it's a fraction of a degree. It's less than 0.5% difference between this circumference or diameter and this diameter, so... Credit to his eyes, he has a vernier caliper that he can reach through the lens. Another person brought up something else, but whatever. Okay, the reason that I'm saying in the thrust of my, my videos on this was equatorial mount. If I was um, on the, the, the North Pole, this would be set up like this. You can still look up. If it's on the equator, it would be set up like this. And it's kind of weird that if the Earth was flat, you would have to adjust the angle of your equatorial mount, for one thing. The other thing is, you're asking me, why do I have a John? Why did you bore a hole, two holes, through a perfectly good tennis ball? Well, yeah, sawdust. Because I wanted to be able to put a slidey stick in it. And this is it. I'm an observer, and again, if the Earth is flat, I have no idea, you know, why... You would have to set that up to be at the same angle as your latitude. But whatever, we'll just disregard that, that fact. That if this sun and the moon, I guess, are just floating in these broad circles over the earth, I'm going to use a stick, extend the table of my, my DeWalt table saw, using this as a thing of measuring, this goes on forever, the sun would have to travel over the flat earth, I, I feel funny even saying that, um, at a constant altitude. Okay. It's not going up or down. <laughs> it's not diving under the surface. <coughs> it's at a constant altitude. Now, what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? 
Wow, it just crashed into San Francisco. The reason being that you have to use... F Equatorial mounts do work on the would work on a flat earth, but they would not only have to go right and left, they would have to go up and down. You couldn't do it with one axis, because if you only did your equatorial mount with one axis, you would see that the sun is changing altitude. You're also going to have to move it up and down. As it's doing circles, I'm doing my best to keep this at a constant altitude. That you're going to have to use two axes on your equatorial mount to track anything in in the sky but we're talking the sun and the moon you're not only turning it right and left you're turning it up and down which you do not have to do in reality welcome to reality you're tracking it with just one axis because in fact it does make an arc it does make an arc and that arc depends on your latitude because I'm going to stick this thing on here. Look at that. I'm going to have to change the angle of this in order to keep it pointed at Polaris. The angle meaning, not changing this, because that has to stay the same, you have to change the angle of your mount. In conclusion, If the sun is at a constant elevation or altitude above the earth, you not only have to change the orientation of your telescope on that axis, and you also have to change it in this axis. It is impossible to use an equatorial mount moving only one axis on a flat earth. Look at that. And it works for everything that you see. Just turning it with one axis. Oh, I'm sorry, I left something out. The one fellow brought up, who was able to, because he had supervision to detect that less than a half a degree difference, or half a percentage difference between um, this diameter and this diameter. The other fellow was actually able to, what, what was his sign? Oh, okay. Parallax. He was saying that as the Earth goes around the sun, and even spinning, that you wouldn't be able to take time-lapse lapse photography of the stars and see these concentric circles. Well, consider... How much are you moving over the course of some hours, you know, the dark hours, taking time-lapse lapse photography of the star trails? Star trails, interesting term. And even, telescope has now been... Um, promoted the sun duty, this, which is 180 million miles from here to here. Why is this, the North Star and basically the circumpolar stars um, staying in the same place? Why don't you see wide bands? Why do you see just nice star trails? Well, let's consider the distances. 180 million miles, that's 1.8 times 10 to the, the sixth or whatever it is. Um, or seven. If you look at Polaris, it's 2.55 times 10 to the 14th miles. It, <laughs> that's a huge difference. That would be almost um, like saying you're just going to walk around your yard and then compare that distance to flying from L.A. to Moscow. You know, there's that much of a difference. Um, and so you would have to have super fine measurements, which these people called scientists have ability to do, to actually measure the difference in parallax between that. Um, Polaris, um, Alpha Cassiopeia, which is like, I don't know, um, 4.3 times 10 to the, the 15th um, miles. All these things, Mizars, I think it's about the same as, as Polaris. That's a, a star in Ursa Major. Um, 
there are such vast differences in distance compared to you know how much we move, and especially over the course of hours taking time-lapse photography, that you're not going to see um, that difference because of um, parallax. Um, you're expecting things to happen which just can't. And with that, I'm going to close this. Have to go shopping, have to shovel more snow. Happy April. And appreciate your viewership. And please, if you're finding this, if you're a flat earther, um, we're not going to get in to um, uh, the gutter. And although I left that one comment that called people that believe in the helio, or it's actually the sun, yeah, heliocentric, not geocentric, um, model, um, baby eaters and blood drinkers and stuff like that. That's just ridiculous. And so we shall be civilized. Parting shot. I can't convince my wife um, to eat broccoli and cauliflower. And I certainly don't yell and call her names because of it. And so we don't have to call each other names over this. Have a good one.